Hi everyone, it's Rob with Dinan's Racket Team. Today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, banana nut bread right from uh, my kitchen. So first thing you're going to need to do is we got to go back over here to the stove. Let's uh, put the temperature at 350 and hit start. Okay, next thing we need to get two bowls and a loaf pan. If you don't know what a loaf pan is, loaf pan is it's a 9 by 5 sometimes they're in glass, sometimes they're in metal. So this is what we're going to cook it in. So that's what we need to do first. We're going to grab our pan or cooking spray, whatever time you have. We are going to spray the pan completely, getting it all the way around nice and good. Next, you're going to grab some Wonder Flour. And we are going to dust the pan. And you want to make sure you get it all on the sides. All right. And as you can do it, you can start banging it. And it'll cover the whole side of the pan. And I'll show you that so you guys can kind of see exactly what it looks like. See how it's all covered in the foil. All right. Now we can take this and set this to the side so it's not in our way. So we're going to start with a dry ingredient. So we're going to grab the big bowl because this is what we're going to mix in next. We're going to get regular flour, right? Just some all-purpose flour. We've got, I've already measured out two cups. We're going to dump that in there. Now, this recipe is going to be a sugar-free recipe, right? For all my sugar-free peeps out there, right? I'm going to use Splenda because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So what does that mean? It means if I need one cup of sugar, I need one cup of Splenda. Some of the other uh, sweeteners... They don't have that same ratio, so you have to check to see what one you have at home if you're doing it. But I have measured out one cup of Splenda. Pour that in. Next, we're going to need uh, baking soda, salt, and baking powder. So I've already pre-mixed it, but we need to get two tablespoons of baking powder. right? Then we're going to need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And a quarter teaspoon of salt. Once you have all that, dump it all right in. So, this now, right, we got everything in there. We can go set this to the side. We're going to start doing our, our wet mix of it. So, I got ourselves another bowl. We need to have two eggs. Crack them open here. Don't drop the shell like that. All right, so we've got two eggs. Now, we need to get some oil. I like the uh, um, olive oil, but you can use canola oil also. You need to get a third cup. And we're going to pull it right up to a third cup. Pour that right in. Now, we also need to get a quarter cup of milk. All right. Now, the next ingredient is bananas, right? We need mashed bananas. Well, the easiest way to mash a banana is to actually take it, just peel it apart, throw your uh, skin away, grab it between your fingers and thumb, and just start squeezing it. Doesn't have to be real pretty because you're going to blend this, so it'll get it all mixed up better. But there you go. That's kind of, that's just over one cup of mashed bananas, which was actually about three of the small size bananas. So we're going to add that to our mix. Next, we're going to grab out our blender, which I forgot. All right. Plug that in. So, as you can see, everything is just kind of sitting in there. Let me grab out our things. Alright, all you got to do, mix that all together. And as you can see, we're just mixing it up. All right, 
bad. As you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see in this bowl very well, but it's all mixed up. So before we go any farther, next ingredients that you're going to do when we pour those in is our chocolate. So it's a um, unsweetened chocolate, right? You can buy this at the grocery store. It's 100% cocoa, but it has no, um, no sugar in it. Get yourself a knife. I prefer this kind of knife, but you can also use a paring knife. This one just has a little bit easier because it's got more to work with. What you're going to do is you're going to take chocolate. You need a total of six pieces like this. There are two little squares. I'll kind of get a little bit closer so you can kind of see it. All right. And you just take that knife and you kind of just bring it right down in. Right. Put your hand on top of it and just kind of nicely. It'll go through kind of easy and then turn it and come right back through it again. Don't have to have this real good. It doesn't need to be in, you know, super tiny pieces. You just want it kind of chopped up nicely and fine because it's going to mix right in with all the other ingredients. All right. So I already did some. So we can just take this and add that right to it. Now we have our chocolate already done. So we can grab our bowl with all our dry ingredients. Grab our spatula, take your mix, and we're going to start pouring it in, right? And you're just going to kind of mix it all right up and in. Make sure you take your spatula and clean out all of it out. Now what you're going to do is you're going to just start mixing it all together. And as you mix it, it starts getting a little bit thicker. Starting to get a little bit of a form to it, right? It's got, starting to get a little bit like a sticky material. This is about the time you want to take your chocolate, all right? Throw your chocolates in and throw in your one cup of walnuts. All right, and we got to keep mixing it up really good you want to make sure that you get all that flour that's on the bottom of that bowl all mixed in and as you can see you just kind of keep smashing it down see how it's getting a little sticky it's starting to stick to the spatula that's just about when it's almost completely done I think a little bit of flour still here let me scrape it down from the sides Alright, it's looking pretty good. So this is what the dough kind of looks like. Alright. Let me mix it one more time here. Make sure I get that all the way. Don't want to have any like loose flour. You want to kind of make sure that it's all mixed. Alright, so. Now it's kind of a little bit sticky. Alright, that's just about how you want it. Right there. So see how it just kind of. Wants to stick onto that spatula? That's perfect. Now we can go over and grab our powdered up and sprayed up pan and we are going to dump it right in there. Make sure you, you get all the rest of it out of the bowl. That's, you don't want any of this good stuff to go to waste. Want it all in that bread. Now you might have to take your finger and you can kind of that or a knife. If you're making it for somebody else, you definitely want to use a knife on that. But you kind of just want to spread it around so that it kind of looks even in the bowl. I'll give you a little look at it here once I get this. All right, so this is exactly what it looks like. All right, just sitting in that pan. So now, hopefully your oven is like mine, is already preheated. We're gonna put it in there and we're gonna cook it for 45 minutes. 
So stick it in, set a timer for 45 minutes. Make sure you write 45, it's not four, out, four minutes and 50 seconds. So, and at 45 minutes, we'll take it out, stick a toothpick in it. If nothing comes out on your toothpick, then it is done. Um, and you are ready to take it out. Let it sit on a hot pad for 10 minutes. And you're going to take the loaf and you're going to put it on a cooling rack. So what I do is I always take this and I take my pan and I'll put it right here and then I'll flip it. Right, and then it'll stay right on the cooling rack. But I'll show you that um, as soon as it gets out of the oven. All right, thanks. All right, well, about ten seconds left. We're almost done. Let's grab our uh, grab our toothpick. Wait for our timer to go off. I'll shut that off. And I'll open up the door. I'll pull it out a little bit here. Oh, it's looking good. So we're going to take our toothpick, go right into the center of the thing, and it is done. It has nothing on the toothpick, so that's, that's what you're looking for. As long as there's nothing on the toothpick, it is done. So, look at that, looking very nice. Look at that, ooh, it's pretty nice, see? And if you kind of shake it, you can feel that your bread moves, so that means it's not stuck to the pan. All right, let's let it sit for about 10 minutes and uh, we'll uh, pull it off the pan and then uh, let it uh, cool on the rack and then you can uh, have at it after that. All right, looks like we got about five minutes, five seconds left on the timer. So what we're going to do is careful the pan's still going to be very warm. Let me shut that off. So make sure you take your hot pads. All right, you're going to grab at the bottom of the pan and then you're going to put the other one on top slide it right over and on to cooling rack all right now just let that cool i would say about another maybe uh seven eight minutes then you can cut yourself off a nice slice put some butter on it and enjoy all right, thanks for joining me. Um, come back. We'll uh, have another one here soon. I'll uh, see you guys. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you later.